On November 22, 1930, a group of National Socialist thugs arrived here and forced their way inside of a club called the Tanzpalast Eden. They started attacking people because it was a well-known hangout for people that they saw as their opposition on the left of German politics. In the ensuing brawl, three people were killed and around 20 were injured. The victims then sought legal representation and they called on a brilliant lawyer famed for representing the workers. His name was Hans Litten. Litten was born to a Jewish father and a Christian mother in 1903. By the time he was in his mid 20s, he'd qualified as a lawyer and he'd moved here to the Scheunenviertel in the middle of Berlin. And then he started to turn down work offers from top law firms. Why? Because he wanted to work with a group called Rote Hilfe or Red Help. They specialized in helping people that had been the victims of police brutality or of fascist attacks. And that is how Litten came to cross-examine Adolf Hitler in 1931. At this point, the Nazi party's popularity was rising and Litten wanted to use the Tanzpalast Aden case to prove to the German people that the Nazi party were not at all democratic, that they were lawbreakers and that those orders came from the top. Litten requested Hitler's testimony in court and it was granted. He was then able to cross-examine him for three hours. Hitler was a very talented public speaker, someone who's very aware of media and how he's perceived, but Litten was an excellent lawyer. He was able to tangle Hitler up in his own lies, make Hitler frustrated. He went red in the face. He started shouting at Litten that you can't prove anything. He'd lost it and he was humiliated. He would never ever forget the name Hans Litten. In fact, later on, he wouldn't even allow people to say the name in front of him. He especially had forgot his name just after he became Chancellor in 1933. In the wake of the Reichstag fire on the 27th of February that year, there was a wave of arrests. The Nazis essentially just went after people who they didn't like, whether or not they were connected to the fire in any way. Litten was one of the very first people to be arrested at this time. He was imprisoned in a concentration camp and then over the next five years he would be shifted from camp to camp to camp. He was incredibly brutally beaten. In fact, uh, he even lost an eye. On the 5th of February 1938 in the Dachau concentration camp, Litten made the decision to take his own life. To remember him, a street was named after Hans Litten in 1951 in East Berlin. It's where you can find one of Berlin's most important and most beautiful court buildings. There's a bust of Litten inside.